Your Town Matters is funded by the Government of Canada through the Local Journalism Initiative and supported by Cactus Media, Canada's independent community television association. Today is the mayor of the village of Blacks Harbor, John Craig. Thanks so much, John, for joining me again today. Well, it's my honor to be here. Thank you. I'd love to talk a little bit about the summer, some of the exciting sure. things um, happening in Blacks Harbor, but also a lot about amalgamation too, mm -hmm. and how you are transitioning towards that for the fall. But gotcha. let's start off with 50th anniversary celebrations. Obviously, it's a bittersweet year for Blacks Harbor. It's 50th anniversary of the village, but also the last year of the village in, mm -hmm. in terms of it being its own entity. Um, how's that been going this summer? It's been going good. We had a, a, an arena fest, uh, which had a couple of bands come in and play at the arena, and that was quite s successful. We had a lot of people come. You have to remember that we're just getting over the uh, pandemic, so people were just glad to get out and see other people again without having to wear a mask and all the other things. So it was, that worked out very well. We're gearing up now for the uh, Labor Day weekend, which is what we call our Fog Fest. And that's gonna be bigger and better again this year than last year. We got more things planned. We got, uh, and the items that we have planned that are the same as last year are gonna be bigger, uh, such as the, uh, the antique cars and stuff like that. They're gonna be antique. I think from what Kara was telling me, it's not gonna be just cars. There's gonna be other uh, modes of transportation as well coming into this also. Like as far as bikes and buses and that sort of thing. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna have a huge fireworks display uh, Labor Day weekend, September the 3rd, so mark that on your calendar. <laughs> September the 3rd, a Saturday night. If, if the weather's bad that night, we'll go Sunday night. But uh, the, we're going to have probably one of the largest fireworks displays in New Brunswick. And uh, I know other ones have advertised the, the biggest, but we are going to have one of the bigger ones. So I, I hope that a lot of people will come down to the harbor that, that, that weekend. And uh, we have a parade set for that Sunday on the September the 4th. So we're hoping for good weather and lots of activities going on. And it's our, like I say, it's our 50th anniversary. So we're we're putting as much money and act and energy into this weekend because it's our last year. Oh wow! I I've had that feeling going through uh, the different communities in Charlotte County this summer. It's partly I think the pandemic, us being able to gather again at this chapter of the pandemic anyway. And then there is this vibe about amalgamation. I think we felt it in St. George recently. Um, you know, towns where people feel like they are sort of losing a sense of self in a way as they go towards mm -hmm. amalgamation. So there is definitely um, the celebration part of it, but also it's kind of like saying goodbye in a way. Is that a bit of the well, vibe? Well, you know, it is kind of because we are losing history, like our incorporation, uh, 50 years at Black Tavis Village, but uh, the town of St. George, I think is 180, was it 180 years? I forget now the exact It's literally. a long time. <laughs> but, but it's over 100 years anyway. So the, a lot of history and heritage going down, going away and and uh, the, of the incorporation. So it is kind of sad to see that go. I mean, I know that uh, we're moving ahead in East, with Eastern Charlotte and we're trying to make that work. So, uh, but you know, but it is a year to reflect on our past and uh, we can never forget our past. It's, they're the ones that got us here, so we don't want to forget that. Now, Fogfest, I have to bring this up just for pure personal interest. I did hear there are soapbox derbies. Yep. in Blacks Harbor. Mm -hmm. Does this take place at Fog Fest? Absolutely, and that's going to be on that Saturday morning, September the 3rd. Uh, and uh, It's exciting. I, I, I like doing it. I, I, last year they had me do the announcing for it, and I had fun doing it, and uh, it, it's great fun. We have a hill, the, the, these, these soapboxes, the, 
the, the kids or their parents will make, and the kids will get in and they go down the hill as fast as they can, and, and whoever gets down the bottom first wins, and sort of thing. So it's kind of it's kind of fun. The kids are, kids get excited for it, and uh, yeah, and it's fun to watch. So I uh, had I had no idea how much I went for the first time uh, family fun days in St. George recently. I had no idea that it was yeah. honestly that thrilling. To yeah. watch, so I will be there. I mean, I had fun with it. We had one soapbox. It was decorated with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I said, "Well, that's it. there's a car that's going to start out well, but." It's not going to end up too well <laughs> at the very end. <laughs> so another uh, big yeah. thing that's happening in the Blacks Harbor area is uh, sure. YMCA presence. Absolutely. Can you tell me a little bit about how that's going? It's a big deal to have this uh, Absolutely. No, based no. in Blacks Harbor. Yeah, uh, the YMCA is, is every day. They have somebody coordinating, doing the coordinate, and they're advertising what they're doing with their uh, their programs on on the Facebook page or on our or on the the village site. So they're they're, they're in essence all kinds of activities for kids and adults too for them to drop by. They have they can have card games and that sort of thing too. So uh, if you look, have to look at the calendar and see what's going on every day. But there is something going on every day at that arena, and and, and they'll be gearing it up as the season goes along. When, when school gets back in and when hockey gets going, they're all going to be there work, having activities for our kids and things to do with this. So that's, we're quite excited about that. We're just getting started on that. So. Are you already uh, getting the sense though that having something like the YMCA mm -hmm. uh, in Blacks Harbor is drawing people in uh, from other communities from that Eastern Charlotte region, maybe that wouldn't necessarily want to travel to St. John for something YMCA related. But for sure, absolutely. We've already seen some of that already. And uh, uh, I can say we have. You have to remember in our village too. We have office buildings that Cooks has that, that draw in people from uh, all all around Charlotte County to come work in, in the office building. So maybe they want to bring their kids to to drop in and head to a program there while they're still at work, or that's that sort of thing. There's ideas like that. So, the, uh, so it it is doing very well. We want basically we want to keep that arena busy is what we want to do. It's a it's a building sitting there that's owned by everybody, not just the people of Black Cyber, but basically everybody has a stake in that building, and we want to keep it busy. Uh, there is an announcement coming up shortly. I'm surprised we haven't had it yet, but because federal and provincial we have to get everybody together but there is a major announcement coming for a major amount of funding for that building i can't get into any more details or i'll get in trouble <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there are going to be a, a fair amount of money coming for that building hopefully we'll get an announcement here within the next next few weeks oh nice yeah, so i know that um something that was um housed at the arena in blacks harbor recently was a consultation that artist Jeff Slater was yeah. doing with the community He's creating yes. this mural and we can talk a little bit on the latest update on on where this mural is going to be too mm -hmm. but let's talk first about the idea of he's creating a mural that really represents Blacks Harbor not just today but the history and the spirit of the community yes. so he interacted with the community all ages um, what was that day like and, and what do you think he took away from that well I think J Jeff is as you know is very knowledgeable and he's and he wants to get uh, as much knowledge as he can he researches blacks he researched blacks ever he talked to the children he talked to adults he talked to everybody he he just doesn't go and slap something on the side of the wall he really puts a lot of work and effort into this so i haven't seen any of the, uh, the his final designs yet so it's going to be new to me too but uh uh, I was told that maybe by Labor Day weekend he'll have the unveiling of it. So the, he's got the he's got the coat of paint on on the building now. So hopefully he'll do. Hopefully his time schedule is still going for Labor Day weekend. Now this mural is for, and we've talked about this before. But for let's yeah. say for someone who didn't watch the the last episode sure. of Your Town Matters that you were on, this is the old Fresh Mart building. That's correct. Yeah, it's becoming a community space. ECW um, yeah. is. is creating this beautiful uh, free access public space uh, complete with the mural. But can you tell us a little bit for people who aren't familiar yet, um, who might not live in Blacks Harbor, I think yeah. everyone in Blacks Harbor knows, but for those outside the community watching what this space is going to be. Well, it is, it, there's so many things that got going on. First of all, uh, I just drove by today, the, the plumbers are still in there and the construction people are in there. They're putting in uh, four bathrooms in there for the public so people can drop by, say a tourist driving through, they need to use a bathroom before going to the ferry or whatever have you. It gives them a chance to stop there, free Wi-Fi. 
So if you go to the bathroom, you can be on Wi-Fi. I don't know if anybody does that, but they can. <laughs> but the, the, uh, the, uh, you can have Wi-Fi outside the building too, all around outside, and there'll be places to set. There's also uh, charging stations for cars coming. That's, uh, that's already on the docket. So they have, char they have cars down there, they're electric cars now. So that would be a, a place for them to be charged. But I do know some people are, have electric vehicles in, in the area. So now they're gonna, there's another spot in Charlotte County where they'll be able to charge their vehicles. Inside, they're going to be growing plants and uh, vegetables and that sort of thing. Yeah. It's sort of a, 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 um, a university project. And they're going to be partnering with universities and that sort of thing, growing different things inside the building. So it's, uh, it, that building is going to be well utilized, plus office space for uh, ECW as, as well, too. So. Wow. So it, it's uh, the full building is being is going to be utilized, and I can say we're very very fortunate. I keep telling people at Black Zebra, we're very fortunate to have Jeff Slater as the person putting these murals outside. Because I said, I said anybody could just put anything on that wall, but we had Jeff Slater, and that, <laughs> you couldn't ask for a better person than that. So we're very fortunate to have that. In the, I'm very um, excited to, on my way to town council, I pass by it, so I'm always excited to see what it's going to look like once the, yeah. the final project yeah. is complete. I know, I know St. Andrews knows what Jeff can do, and right? so now Black Cyber is going to be able to see it now. So in the indoor farming aspect, do you know if that's a community garden or is that still in the works? Uh, you have to really speak to ECW on that. I think that they're still in the, the works of what they're exactly they're going to grow in there and how that's going to work. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I think by basically you'd have to talk to them. They are, they are yeah. scheduled to come in, I think, early next month. I yeah. have Brianna and, and Rose right. coming from ECW. Yeah. So if you're watching at home and looking to hear more on that, I'm... I made sure to schedule them because yeah, sure. I'm extremely curious. Now, uh, the, now the village of Black Cyber is partnering with them. They they needed some. Uh, they the when they apply for money uh, from a lot of other, other levels of government, it's always great that the local uh, community, the, which is the municipal government, is involved with it too. Mm -hmm. So the federal government will look at that. Okay, the, municip the, munici the municipality is behind it. So we're going. We will give you more money, so uh -huh. we're we're on board to help them out as well. And uh, we uh, last month we decided to, to give them some money to give them some help to, along the way for the for this whole project to, to happen. They are one of the, and we've talked about this before, but they're, to me they're one of the most fascinating organizations to watch in the province, oh, and, yeah, and to have them based in Blacks Harbor is neat because I look at it as sort of this microcosm that other communities uh, there could be a wider scope. What mm -hmm. happens there could be a model for other communities and the yeah, car I mean, sharing uh, is neat too it's i think we focus a lot on the electric aspect of it but the fact that these are cars the mm -hmm. ones that they have that the community can share have you noticed in blacks harbor that that's given freedom to people that maybe didn't have a car uh, of their own prior to oh absolutely I mean, it, it gives uh, people the opportunity to uh, to if they don't have a car then because some people would like to live in the village and just be able to walk to work in the grocery store but this and it, it's, it's tough especially when you're starting out working in a, in a, in a plant to to make enough money to have enough money for everything so this way they can rent a car whenever they need one so it does add add to the uh, to black cyber it gives a, another option for people to reason to live there Mm -hmm. uh, is there a timeline on the the Fresh Mart project? I know that it's uh, a ways away from being completed, but yeah. definitely all. I'm not sure. On it. I know the bathrooms must be getting close because they, I see the plumbers and they're working and the construction guys every day, so they must be getting close to that part. Of it. Anyways, it'd be nice to have that ready for Labor Day weekend, so that uh, so it's being utilized for Fog Festival because that whole area of downtown Black Harbor uh, is is full of people for that weekend. There's all kinds of people around, so it'd be nice to be able to use that. To, use that facility for that at the time. I'd love to pivot for a moment to talk to you about uh, being a part of the transition committee for Blacks Harbor as we yeah. all move towards amalgamation yeah. and, and what this entity of Eastern Charlotte will be. Um, when we look at the scale of amalgamation throughout the province, Eastern Charlotte to me is one of the most dramatic. It's a lot of like St. George and Blacks Harbor alone to put the two together is, is a big transition. Um, it'll also incorporate everything from Bonnie River, Penfield, Back Bay. It's going to be a really big entity, a, a lot of weight at the table at the Southwest New Brunswick Service Commission for sure, but yeah. in the moment it must be a huge transition to, uh, to get behind as mayor and to like watch what you're doing right now uh, become something else. It is. It's, it's going to be. It's, I mean, this is history in the, in the making, really, and uh, and to be part of it is, is is exciting as well. 
and and it's it's going to be a big challenge too. I mean, as I said in my early interviews, I don't expect this to be a bed of roses. It's going to be, at, at the first I bet the first three or four years it's not going to be easy to get people to work together and uh, to to keep them working together and working for the best for the best of the whole Eastern Charlotte area. I have been out, and, I, and, and as you know, I am running for the mayorship of it. I have been out basically almost every day and every weekend uh, campaigning, and I get to, get to meet a lot of people. And uh, it's, 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 for me, it's a learning experience because uh, I'm, I'm being educated. My, my campaign manager, Dale Wells, is educating me and, and uh, the whole history of the St. George area and, and, uh, and different streets and where people lived in the past. So he's really good at that. So I'm learning a lot about St. George. And, and I, I was at a person's house the other night, day, and I told them, I said, right at, right at the moment, there's nobody officially running against me at, at the moment, but if there wasn't, even if there wasn't anybody running, I'd still be out there every day campaigning because I'm learning. I get to go to people's houses and talk to them, and people are more honest than, and, and when they're in their own living room, their own, own kitchen, mm -hmm. and, they, and they want to tell me things. And, that's, and I love that part of it because I get to see people in their own environment and, and be honest. And, uh, and so, I, so it's, a, it's a big learning experience for me, and I enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm out in the sun a lot, so I probably will, <laughs> probably will have read that <laughs> because I'm, I'm out a lot. But, uh, but I'm having a good time. It's, it's a beautiful time of the year to be out in, in the sun, and, uh, and get, I make sure I drink lots of water. <laughs> so, uh, Dale, Dale's the one who does a good job, keeps, keeps me going, <laughs> pushes me along. <laughs> so, I will say I've run into you in yeah. St. George, Back Bay, you definitely are making the rounds, uh, meeting people, yeah. and that must offer a unique perspective. I think you being on the transition committee is one thing, but when yeah. you're going on the campaign trail and going yeah. door to door, what is it you hear? And I don't mean this just out in the towns that you're not as familiar with. I mean this including Black Harbor. What are you hearing from people in that eastern Charlotte region in terms of what their top concerns are. The, big, the biggest one is the, the, probably the number one and is the, especially people outside the the municipalities is, is taxes and that's the first thing they're going to say and that's honestly that's what they should be saying because it is a worry because it's a, or a concern of, of theirs because a lot of the people outside the communities are elderly people, seniors and that sort of thing. They can't afford a whole lot more in taxes. They're, they're on a they're on a fixed income, and they uh, they can't afford a whole, a whole big jump in their tax their tax rate or or paying more taxes just because somebody from Ontario came and bought a house beside them and elevated the the, the value of their property because they paid twice as much for it than what they should have, but it does elevate the whole area and, and the uh, the value of the property. So it makes it tough for seniors, and they're and they're 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 keeping an eye on this whole thing too. But taxes are number one. Absolutely, for sure. Uh, one thing I did uh, on a more of a positive note is, uh, is the other this past weekend, Dale and I were out driving around, and all these activities going on St. George's Fun Days. I think it'd be very important for the Eastern Charlotte to hire one person just to take care of the activities of, of, of the whole area, Black Cyber, St. George, uh, whether, whether it be uh, the Fog Festival or St. George Fun Days or the Beaver Harbor Days or, or Bonnie, uh, Bonnie River has certain things going on up there with ball games. And, uh, somebody just to coordinate all these activities and make mm -hmm. sure things happen. Because it's hard to, to uh, expect volunteers to do all this work, but if you have somebody full time on staff just to make sure we have this, all these things happening all the time, mm -hmm. it's great for tourism, great to keep people in our area. And at the same time, it takes the pressure off the volunteers and the coordination of it too. This way, you don't have to have like a Santa Claus parade at the same time as huh. as you have one in in Black Harbor, and an hour later, and one in St. George. Try to coordinate different <laughs> days because Santa Claus is a busy guy. He can't be in two places at once. So you have to make sure you coordinate this all this sort of thing. I can ask you this because so far you're you're the only one I know running in the Eastern Charlotte. Either it's even in terms of councilors, everyone's either on the fence or they say they're not. Mm -hmm. at the moment. So I can ask sure. you this because you are declared. Yeah. Um, what have been the hardest moments of transition so far? Like, What do you think will be the biggest obstacles 
when we move from the phase we're at now, which is the transition phase, to actually amalgamating, you mentioned right what you just said about mm -hmm. an events coordinate coordinator being mm -hmm. very useful, and it will yeah. be challenging to yeah. to navigate all these communities at the same yeah. time. It, it, there's going to be a lot of issues, and and I talked to somebody from the province today, and he he was very blunt and very honest. He said, John, he said that right now the government's running by the seat of their pants on this. They're they're behind on, on a lot of things. I asked for maps of the uh, uh, the ward areas. I said, I want to know which house is in which ward. Like, for example, if this house is in, if, if you're getting close to the, to the line, which house is on which side of that line? They can't give me that yet. They're, they're still so far behind, they don't know that yet. They don't have it narrowed right down to the exact detail yet. And it's getting concerning because now we're halfway through the summer and we're getting close to, when you get halfway through the summer, it's not going to take long to be October. <laughs> so people have to know where they're, with, especially if people are running, have to know which ward they're running in and right. who, which houses are in there. They're going to look kind of foolish campaigning in a ward and, they don't, and, and they're in the wrong ward. <laughs> so it's, so it's, it's, the government really has to come on board. The, 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 the other thing and, and we talked about also was a, a municipal building. And this is something I'm going to go make, a, I'm going to make this a campaign issue for Eastern Charlotte because I, somebody's got to be doing it. And I'm, as Mayor Black Tower, I'll do it now and I'll do it as a candidate too. But I think it's very important that the province in New Brunswick comes aboard and helps out the Eastern Charlotte to have a brand new municipal building for the area. We have to remember the, the, the province in New Brunswick made it so that Black Saver and St. George, two incorporated areas, had to be brought together. But I think the province in New Brunswick should do the right thing and mm. help us out. They shouldn't expect the taxpayers of this area to have to pay for a brand new building when something they this is something that they did to us. And I think it's important that they, they should come on board and, and try to help you find a piece of land, help us with the financing of the building, and build a state-of-the-art building in a central spot. Not it doesn't have to be St. George, it doesn't have to be in Black Saver, somewhere central that would be good for all the people of Eastern Charlotte. And this is what I'm going to campaign on hard too and lobby lobby the provincial government to make sure they, they come on board because I think they have to be pressured to do this and do the right thing because they made it so that we have to do this. They should make it easier for us on, on the taxpayers of Eastern Charlotte. They shouldn't expect the people of Eastern Charlotte have, with other things we have to pay for to have to come up with a new municipal, municipal building when they were the ones who did this in the first place. Have there been any issues? I know it's summer, so things can be slower in summer months, but have you found as um, a community that it's hard to move forward with plans for Blacks Harbor right now as you wait for, for amalgamation to take place? Well, it's not hard. We're, we're, our council is working. Our, our, our biggest problem in council is we don't have enough time left, and we're trying to work fast mm -hmm. to get things passed and trying to get things done. We know we're going to run out of time. We, there are certain projects we're not going to be able to get done, and we feel frustrated because we we got elected for four years, and all we're going to get is a year and maybe and a bit more. And, and it's and it's tough because it's not fair to my council because they're a young council and they want to get things done, and they're really pushing fast. And, we, and, we, and as you know in government, you can't go too fast because that's when you make mistakes. So you make you sign a wrong contract or you do something you don't doesn't mm -hmm. protect your citizens. So you have to be very careful. In, in the municipal government, not to do, go too fast, but now we got we know our time. We're all done. Basically, our last meeting in, it would be in October that we can actually do anything. So, yeah. so in November we're all done. So uh, that's the that's the biggest thing is the frustration and not being able to have more time. We'd like to have we would like to have another year at least yeah. to get things done. And probably the problems the problems in your budget yeah. probably should have taken an extra year to do this because they are. I'm running by the seat of the pants, getting things done and trying to push it through as fast. But that's that's what we were handed, and we will move ahead with it and do the best we can. Do you know if any councillors? I know last time we spoke, you didn't know that no one had said yet from the current council of the village mm -hmm. that they plan to run. Um, I, I know for sure that Adam Hat it will be uh, my deputy mayor. He's definitely going to run, and he's I think he's going to run in the the ward of the Black Saver, and he'll do very well. And I'm pretty sure. Jordan Thompson, you're going to run too, and Jordan's going to run for I think in as the council at la councilor at large, so you know he doesn't run against Adam. <laughs> and uh, and Jordan is very a very good councilor. So I've been talking to him, and and twist his arm a little bit to, to get him. I know he's got a young family and all sort of thing, so we had to think about that. But he'd be be awesome on our council. All of them would be good, but uh, I'm. I've, 
but the ones that I've been thinking about has been Jordan and, and Adam, and I've just got to push Jordan a little bit more, and I think he'll be there. <laughs> so is that how the Black Harbor representation will work in amalgamation? There'll be one, one, and an at large that could be. It could be, yeah. There's okay. actually two at large. It could be, but okay. uh, that's that's just according to where they run. It could be somebody from St. George running at large as well but we are guaranteed just the one seat in the ward of Black Harbor but the same as all the other areas they're only guaranteed one seat. Well so many uh, big changes and I obviously will have you back many times before they actually take shape uh, and as we see them crystallize so thank you John for taking the time. Oh the interview's over already? I went by fast. I'm having fun this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I will say a last minute shout out though to Stacy Frost, your CAO, whose daughter Drew Frost is going oh, to the Canada Games. Isn't that something? Isn't that great to have somebody local like that and be picked to, to go to get the Canada Games? I mean, that's that's really awesome. And to have somebody like Stacy, who's our CAO right there, and to, I know she Stacy takes her and gets her driving. I uh, spends the weekends making sure she goes to all these games and practices and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's not just the do uh, her daughter's uh, thing, but Stacy's thing too, because Stacy's been really helping her out a lot, making sure she gets there. So congratulations to both of them. Yeah, we so have a correspondent really going to the Kennedy <laughs> Games, so hopefully this we'll get awesome, an entry yeah, with yeah, Drew while she's yeah, there. And a, a big shout out to uh, Betty and Mike Stewart and uh, and Carolyn and Ronnie Bro, their 50th wedding anniversary this, this past month too, and we, I've been to their anniversary. That's, I have to remember, I'm still the mayor of Black Sabbath, so I'm still <laughs> doing, I'm taking off each hat, and I'm out campaigning, and I come back, and put on the chain of office and go out and uh, do my mayor's duties and, and make sure I, I attend to all, all the activities. The Fog Festival, I'll be attending every event going on there, so I'll be busy that whole weekend going to every event going on, So, which I did last year as well. And it's, but it's fun. I really enjoy seeing people and greeting people and talking to people. Well, That's the, I, this past weekend, I went from the uh, uh, Carolyn and Ronnie Bro's 50th wedding anniversary across the street to the restaurant because there's people at the restaurant from Ontario bikers and stuff. Uh, uh, well, bicycles traveling around all from uh, from the states and in Ontario, and they they stopped at the local restaurant, the kitchen. Everybody knows the kitchen in Black Harbor, and they they stopped there. So I went over to the restaurant, and went to each table, and, and we met and greeted greeted all the people visiting Black Cyber. So it was fun. Well, I will definitely see you at the Soapbox uh, Derby, 100%. I will be there, um, and I will see you again before that uh, right here on this couch. So thank you so much for being here today, John. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. My guest today has been John Craig, Mayor of the Village of Black Harbor. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Thank you for watching Your Town Matters.